attention. Oh, it's good to go there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> good morning, St. John's. Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to our service this morning, and we're especially glad to see you on this beautiful sunny morning. Um, Pastor Craig asked me to remind you that as you're seated, you can take your masks off if you wish, but back on again when you stand up or, or go out to walk someplace. So we'll start our service. Here we go. Oh, good morning. Oh, here we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. When I say this at home, very few people respond, so let's try this again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> there you go. It, this is really sweet to look out and see the church again. Last Yesterday we were at, uh, at Mirror Lake, kind of doing a little uh, little goodbye to our lakefront property there, and it was, it was, a, it was a really important time. And then, uh, and then we also said kind of hello to our interior property that's it's gaining some beauty out there. If you haven't got a chance to go out there, I encourage you to go out. Dennis and the gang have done an amazing job out there at Mirror and so wherever this church gathers, like wherever we gather, whether we're in our living rooms on an on a online service or whether we're here in, in, the, in the backyard of CBC, you know, in the shadow of our old building, like it, it doesn't matter really. And we're learning that more and more. It doesn't matter where we meet. Uh, the church gathers and the church is a church. And so welcome church today. So, so we're going to sing this song, Our God Saves. I'm supposed to tell you not to sing along, so don't sing along. Oh, really? <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. So anyways, um, whatever. This, this is a Trinity Sunday, so we're you know, speaking about Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So here we go. Our God saves. Songs of praise. 
Good to go. Excellent. You know, it occurs to me, while we're not able to sing by COVID regulations, we are allowed to clap, you know? So, well, I know, Nadia, you try to get us going, but I'm thinking even at the end of the song, we could say, yay! <laughs> You gotta try, you gotta try. We gather here and we gather online today in the mission that Jesus gave when he rose from the dead. And the mission was to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Every Sunday we gather with this mission that Jesus gave. We gather as disciples. We gather as students of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And every year, we set aside this Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost, to reflect on the wonder of the mystery of God that we call the Holy Trinity. God is Jesus has made God known to us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three loving, one God, one love, and one in love for us. So we gather today, here and online, to share and grow in the mystery of this love we are baptized in in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our readings today are read to us by Elaine Bug. Thanks so much for Elaine. Poor gal, she's hobbling over here. Do you mind if I tell them what you told me? Okay. <laughs> Elaine said to me, as we were chatting before the service, she said to me, I have a screw loose. <laughs> I said to Elaine, we all do. <laughs> She said, yes, but mine is loose in my big toe. And if you look at her poor big toe, it's very swollen and very painful. So she's hobbling over. But thank you for coming and volunteering to read the word of God to us today. God bless you. Our first reading for the celebration of Holy Trinity Sunday takes us back to Jesus' last words to the disciples before he ascended into heaven from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Our second reading is from the book of Acts selected verses in the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. This Jesus God raised up, 
and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. God bless us with hearts open to receive the promise of his word. For our hymn today, we have a very special treat. Uh, Don is going to come over and tell us about that. I just didn't think on Trinity Sunday that we wouldn't hear the hymn, Holy, 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 because you got to do that on Trinity Sunday. So members of our church got together and put together a little choir, so we're going to sing that song. And so I thought, since you can't see us, <laughs> see who it is, I just would tell you who it is. For soprano, we had... Um, Oh, brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, sorry, Susan. I was practicing. Susan Lloyd and Elaine Bug and Debbie Breitkreitz and Alto. We had Melissa Marsh and myself. Um, tenor, uh, those of you who remember my brother John, he joined in from Texas. And Pastor Craig. And for the bass, we have Tim Johnson and my brother John again. <laughs> May you be blessed by this beautiful, beautiful hymn. Thank you. 
I enjoyed mouthing the words to that. I don't know about yourselves, but uh, Donna and choir, thank you for, uh, for that contribution to the service today. You know, the mystery of the Holy Trinity was there all along. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was r right there at the start and is right there at the start of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Creation proceeds, the Father willing, the Son speaking, and the Spirit moving. And then God said, let us make humans in our image after our likeness. And so God created humans in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And humans just did not see it or get it. Didn't see the mystery of the Holy Trinity, the Father willing, the Son speaking, and the Spirit moving, to make humans, male and female, with all of our diversity, a reflection of God, the divine community. Instead, people saw themselves as individuals competing with each other, each out for his or her own self, and they saw gods everywhere. So, God picked a particular nation, Abraham and his family, to teach them that there are no other gods, only one, and then, Jesus came. And Jesus talks about God as Father. And being one with his Father. And doing the will of his Father. And the need for him to die, to show the love of his Father. And to go away, so that the Holy Spirit can come as their helper, to witness to him and his Father. <laughs> and they didn't get it. Even after he rose, even after he rose, among those closest to him, those 11 that were with him, there was a 12th, but we won't talk about him, those 11 that were with him, that were called to be his apostles, his sent ones, even among those closest to him that had been through everything with him and had seen him risen, had experienced this, as we hear Matthew tell us, some did not worship him. which absolutely makes sense. God worked so long and so hard to get this people to accept only one God, no other gods. How could Jesus be God? And then the Holy Spirit came, just as he said, and then they got it. They got the mystery of Jesus, God, man, Son of God, Word of God, Logos of God, Mary's child. One with the Father and the Holy Spirit. John, looking back at the beginning of the Bible, starts his gospel to reflect the beginning of the Bible. John writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was at the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That is, all things were made through the word. In him, that is, in the word, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. So, thanks to the grace of God and the faithfulness of those 11 and so many others, we gather today in faith in the mystery of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, one love. And how much we really get of this? <laughs> you gotta laugh. I mean, that's a mystery too. As Paul says, one day... One day we will see like adults. But for now, we don't 
really get it. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. And then Paul says this, for now we see in a mere dimly, in other words, we're infants, maybe toddlers at best. For now we see in a mere dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have become fully known. Can you imagine that day when you will fully get the Holy Spirit? It's that glorious day when you see Jesus face to face when he returns or we depart this earthly life to be with him. Honestly, how can we imagine? We are but infants, toddlers at best. But with all of that, Paul goes on to say, when it comes to God and knowing God and being children of God, right now, there's three things we have that we can count on enduring, lasting, never-ending, in addition to our everlasting life. And the three are, you know this verse, so now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And so we have gathered today with love for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and love for each other to express our faith and hope in God and grow in expressing God's love for the world. And we hear and we share one expression of that in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join us in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I forgot to introduce Randy and Diane Forsyth before. Thank you for sharing our faith with us that way and inviting us to join in. And I'd like to invite Pastor Elmer Moshemansky to come forward as uh, he leads us in a prayer time. Thank you, Elmer, for volunteering to do this today. Let us pray. Holy Heavenly Father, we have gathered here this day to give you praise and honor and to receive your wisdom, to strengthen our faith and to increase our courage so that we can continue to be, as Jesus has said, salt of the earth and your light of the world. Heavenly Father, we are faced with many challenges and maladies these days. Father, all around us there is suffering of various kinds. People, and that includes us, who suffer because of physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual maladies. We hold and lift ourselves up to you, Heavenly Father, 
And we also take time to name those we know in our hearts and our minds and lift them up before you as well and share our prayers and concerns for, and our hopes for each other and for them. We name these people in our hearts and our minds at this time and hold them up to you. Father, bless us all in whatever way we may be needing this day. And bless us especially also so that we can discern between wisdom and foolishness, between good and evil, between what is good and right and what is not, so that we can continue to mature and be as St. Paul was inspired to write, to be strong in you, Lord, to be strong in your mighty power, to put on your full armor of God so that we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. We pray to increase in us discernment so that we can recognize that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Heavenly Father, inspire us always to put on the full armor, your full armor, God, so that when the day of evil comes, we may be able to stand our ground, and after we have done everything, to stand. To stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around our waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, we want to take up the shield of faith with which we can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is your word, Heavenly Father. And we also pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to inspire us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind that we be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. As we do that today and every day, Heavenly Father, into your hands we commit ourselves and all people trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks again, Elmer. Right. Too many pieces of paper. <laughs> One of the fun things about being outside is that wind noise. So, Holy Trinity Sunday. We prepare to go, knowing that uh, we are but infants, at best toddlers in our understanding of God, and that's not a bad thing. How many of you know toddlers? How many of you know a toddler? They're pretty amazing, aren't they? Like they continue to surprise you by what they know. Oh, you know how to do that. They toddle, meaning they're starting to walk around. When they start that, it starts to going, oh, I, they really do understand what I'm saying. So it's not a bad thing being a toddler. Toddlers can actually know quite an amazing amount of stuff. They're quite delightful and typically very loving. So you toddlers of God, along with me, let's keep toddling along in our faith in the mystery of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
the love of God for us and God's love for all people. The uh, amazingness of what a toddler can know in our case is uh, partly expressed in, uh, in a creed about the Holy Trinity called the Athanasian Creed, and it's traditional on Holy Trinity Sunday to use the Athanasian Creed. I've, I've actually never done that because it's quite long, and it has parts in it that people raise their eyebrows about and need explaining. But I'm going to read this tiny little bit, which makes very, very clear the picture of the mystery of the Holy Trinity, the three and one. The true faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the person nor dividing the substance. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, and yet there are not three Lords but one Lord. The three are co-eternal with each other and co-equal so that in all things the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. You can see me later if you want to see the actual quote, but not bad for a toddler, hey? Yeah. But it's that picture of just really being clear, three but one. And the gift in knowing the oneness of God and the gift in knowing we have a Father that loves us and a brother in Christ that's the Son of God that loves us and a Holy Spirit that is God's love on the move in us. So we go in faith and hope and love in the mystery of the Holy Trinity and in the clearest thing about all of this, and that is love. The Father's love for the Son. The Son's love for the Father. And the Holy Spirit, love on the move, holding all together as one and inviting us into the oneness of it all with God and each other, desiring our love. To me, that's probably the craziest thing about it. The Creator that provided everything good and provides all that is good desires our love. The source of everything still has something. He says, I still need this. I still want this. I got everything, but I desire your love. So go. Let us go in faith in the mystery of the Holy Trinity to live in and share in the love of the Father. The grace upon grace of Jesus, the Christ, and the fellowship of moving in the Holy Spirit. Amen. With that, I invite uh, Joel to come forward with his group. You can tell us about your group when you come forward to share a last song with us. just this is great just laying there just laying there listening to to some of the the goings on the creed and the and the um the message and hearing these truths in the midst of this creation um in the midst of the family of god it's, it's a beautiful thing i'm so glad to, to be with you here today glad to have these 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 three beautiful girls i get to hang out with these guys all the time that's pretty cool so we got Rebecca and Annika and Jody. And I just sent Caleb a picture of us, and he said, oh, I wish I was here with you guys. He's working this morning. Um, yeah, so we as, you know, we as a family enjoy doing this, leading in worship and leading in singing. And, uh, and whatever it is that you have to offer this, this community, and, this, and you know, not just the community of St. John's, but the community of Vernon, like, you know, use your gifts. Everyone here has got sweet gifts, whether you're working, whether you've got a business, whether you've got a... You know, just a, a walk that you do, um, whatever it is that you do, do it for the glory of God. And, like, I appreciate Elmer's prayers, that idea of that kind of all the time having that idea of, of praying, just, like, looking around and seeing a, seeing a need 
and giving it to God and giving it to our Father and, and, uh, and do it. Do that. He loves to be a part of our lives. He loves to be a part of our moments and our days. So just involve him in all this stuff. And he would love to, to bless what you're doing and make it even better. So this song is, is kind of, I just, as soon as I heard Trinity Sunday, I thought we got to sing this song. It's an old, old song by Keith Green, Keith Melody Green, There Was a Redeemer. And again, hum along, There Was a Redeemer. I kind of let Annika hang in there. <laughs> I get emotional. These are beautiful songs. Um, as you go from this place, um, may you be blessed. And like I said before, let you carry the, like, like we've got this, I tell my grade five students, I said, you guys have like a superpower in you, like a superpower. Like if you can you choose it to use it or not use it, but you've got the spirit of God in you, the spirit that created the world. Like use it, use your superpowers. Whatever it is, as you go out, be encouraged. Um, just as we think about going forward to with services, uh, next week we'll be back to online at 9 o'clock and probably through the, rest of, through the rest of June. And then our final Sunday in June we'll be back here, hopefully at 10 o'clock. That's the plan. And uh, I said, Pastor Craig and I were talking, what's, what about July and August? We're like, you know, we can't really plan, right? So, so the plan is for sure meeting back here at last Sunday in June. Online will continue as much as we need it. And, uh, and just you know, keep reading your emails to check as far as how summer is going to look. So uh, before you go, make sure to just, uh, just look around. Look around to these people here in this setting. Like, this is our church. And again, representing so many that aren't here, but online, hopefully some of you are there too. Robin, thanks for your little work and your uh, camera work. Not little work, your great tech work. Um, let me just pray it as we finish up. So Father God, we're so thankful for this Sunday, the opportunity to meet here at St. John's as St. John's. And just thinking about the people worshiping right 25 feet from us in the, in the in CBC building as they're worshiping as well. And other churches that are doing their best to worship today as well. We pray that you would send us out with joy, send us out with courage, and with that superpower of your uh, presence within us as we celebrate this Father, Son, Holy Spirit Day. And we just ask your blessing and your care on our travels, on our thoughts, on our words, on our actions. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>